You're watching Exit 1055 with your host, Richard Rose. Hey, good morning. I'm Richard Rose. Welcome to Exit 1055 Long Island. This is your TV 1055 show about all things Long Island. In just a few moments, membership at veterans clubs and halls has been drastically dropping through the decades, and the remaining members are struggling to keep their halls maintained. Many are closing. Others need serious repairs. We'll explain what's being done to help. But we begin with Nassau County voters making history this past Tuesday, electing the first woman to serve as Nassau County Executive. Laura Curran will take over in Mineola come January, TV 1055's Carolyn Gussoff with more now on what lies ahead for Nassau residents. So begins a new chapter for Nassau County. Nassau voted to end the culture of corruption. Democrat Laura Curran, the first woman elected county executive on Long Island, breaking a glass ceiling and vowing to break with the past. Today, please, let's start to build back the bonds of trust that have been badly frayed. Let's start reforming our government so it starts to work for those who pay for it. Voters say the transparency Curran promised is desperately needed. Now they'll hold her to it. Saying we need change, we want change, we want an end to corruption. Corruption has got to end in Nassau County. It's been going on way too long. Her opponent, former state senator Jack Martins, also a corruption fighter, the leader of the once unbeatable Nassau Republican machine, conceded the party had been dealt a blow. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, there are certain circumstances and issues that are very, very hard to get over. Ever present in voters' minds, Ed Mangano leaving office amid corruption charges, and Dean Skelos, another fallen Nassau GOP favorite son. What can residents now expect under Curran? She says a total overhaul of county ethics, a fix to the property assessment system with more qualified assessors, and outreach to Republican county lawmakers still in control. It will be difficult for to get things done, but I think that the Republicans on the legislature saw the so-called handwriting on the wall and see that people obviously voted for change. And they can expect this election to go down as an historic shift in Nassau politics, America's first suburb electing its first woman leader to dismantle the status quo. In Mineola, Long Island, Carolyn Gussoff, TV 1055. Now, besides the county executive's race, there was much more at stake on Election Day and even some surprises. Joining us to talk about that is Lawrence Levy. He is the executive dean of the National Center for Suburban Studies at Hofstra University. Welcome to the show, Larry. But did you get any Richard. sleep Election Day? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the short answer for it. So what stood out to you? Well, the, you know, the word historic is often overused in, in politics and in sports. But this week in Nassau and even in Suffolk, it truly was a historic election with national implications. You you had, as discussed, that Laura, uh, uh, Laura, Laura, Curran, Garen, Laura yeah. Curran, rather, you've got to mix these Lauras up. That's <laughs> the year of the Lauras, right? <laughs> Laura Curran is the first female uh, county executive in Nassau. Laura Gillen is the first Democrat to hold the Hempstead Town Supervisor seat in 100 years. And Errol Toulon in Suffolk becomes the first countywide elected official there. And that's Laura Gillen, which, you know, is really kind of a shocking one, too, because Hempstead is right. long a stronghold for Republicans. And... Of any of the candidates that I've seen in recent years, she got maybe the least publicity or recognition of anyone I'd ever seen running for office. Even some people are like, who is that standing up on the stage when she won? Right. If there's any political analyst who says he saw Laura Gillen's race... Uh, coming that Tony Santino and the Republicans would lose, they're making it up. Yeah, we want to meet that them. <laughs> one. You know, we were talking about how it might be a lot closer this year because of uh, uh, inter-party Republican dissension in Hempstead, the Trump effect, energized Democrats. But to have the Citadel, one of the the largest town in America, the most reliable Republican bastion fall, is unbelievable. Yeah. So what does that mean for uh, the machine politics there? means they have to regroup. You know, at one time, Nassau County Republicans were considered the most powerful political machine in the country, rivaling Mayor Daley's Democratic machine in Chicago. Now, you have Suffolk County, where also there was interesting news, uh, you know, a, a win that was kind of expected in the district attorney's race, but then a bit of a setback for Democrats, even though they did well all night in the legislature. Explain. Well, the legislature, the Republicans picked up, I think, two seats, one or two seats, when the final counts are done. Uh, and that gives them a chance to chip away the Republicans and rebuild their base. Uh, and it also takes away the supermajority where the Democrats didn't need the Republicans' votes. That's right. Them. And while that's a little bit inside baseball, it has a lot to do with the way you govern. 
how many votes you have and 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 and, and those things but you know the the fact that in trump country a black democrat looks like he won the first countywide seat ever sheriff's is significant, race. the sheriff's race, Errol yeah. Toulon. And that was a ma a ma another person who didn't get a whole lot of publicity no, no. and even kind of came in late to the game. No, and, uh, uh, you know, he was a, a very qualified guy. He had 20-plus years in New York City corrections. And voters looked at the race, and they said, hmm, we've got two qualified people. They looked at it carefully. And so far, unless it changes with the recount right. because it's razor thin, um, they decided to go with Toulon. Yeah, that could happen. And there were a few razor thins. I think in Glen Cove, the mayor won by a 14 votes, and there's a recount there. Right. And they'll have to check the absentee right. ballots. So some close races. What did you think of the turnout? Were people motivated for this? Was yeah, it larger they, than expected? The turnout was larger than it has been in local elections for quite a while. And most significantly, it was especially larger in minority communities, where there's always a problem getting voters to come out, even in presidential years where Barack Obama is not on the top of the ticket. This time, you could absolutely absolutely say that the voters of Hempstead, Uniondale, Roosevelt, and Freeport carried the day for both Loris. And then you had to turn your ballot over this year That's to right. the Constitutional Convention. I wonder if some people did turn over their ballot, right. and that got soundly defeated. No surprise yeah, there, Yeah, we did right? a show on yeah. that a couple weeks ago, and it was clear that the Constitutional Convention was going down. All the energy, all the activity, all the money was being spent on a no vote. And you had strange bedfellows. You had anti-abortion groups and pro-abortion groups on the same side. You had the uh, working families, a very progressive party, and the conservative party on the same side. They all wanted to protect what they have. And, um, you know, and, and it's understandable. I mean, everybody has something that they'd like to change and that they could do that through the Constitution. But then they look at a dozen other things that they are afraid to see might change, sure. and they say, you know what? Let's just leave things the way they are. So I don't know how many times we've heard in the last 20 years that it was going to be the year of women, and sometimes it wasn't. Right. Was this the year of women? This at least in Long Island? Certainly in Nassau County, it was yeah. the year of the woman. Uh, you know, again, the two lawyers, we're going to mix this <laughs> up. You know, I'm going to get this wrong for four years now. Uh, but you had the lawyers, uh, and, um, and, it, it, and they are now in a position you know, getting beyond gender and getting beyond history. They're in a position when you have one of the nation's largest suburban counties and the largest suburban town, a chance to get together to eliminate that overlap. You know, there's a senior citizen department for the county and one for the town. There's public works for the county, one for the town. They have equipment that, that goes along the beaches and cleans them up for the county, then stops, turns around while another one comes up for the town. Well, they could do some really cool things together. Uh, yeah, and look at that. Maybe you could even go into the category and be careful what you ask for. The, right. Within hours of being elected, right. NIFA comes and, out and, and <laughs> says, okay, you're the new county executive now save us $31 million. That's right, and the they're budget. not giving so get her to work. any time right. to kind of figure out how to do it. She has to hit the ground running, as they say, yeah. on the first day of office. So another thing that's really important are the national implications here. As we've discussed before, the suburbs are the swing vote in this country. This is America's first suburb. What happens in Nassau, what happens in Suffolk can give you a clue to where things are going nationwide in 2018. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. What do you think it means for that? Well, it means that the Democrats now have the wind at their backs, not just on Long Island and New York, but around the country. Uh, Republican, uh, Republicans in districts that Hillary Clinton won. There's about 23 congressional districts where Republicans won for Congress and Hillary Clinton won for president. They're really concerned because, they, you know, there's a lot of moderate, independent, even progressive voters who might turn around on them and say, we're done. Well, you know, an off-year election, but nothing uh, off about it. I mean, it had big uh, right. symbolic uh, meaning, perhaps. That's right. We'll see what it portends for next year. Thank you very much. Lawrence Levy, Thank as you. always, our political expert, executive dean for the National Center for Suburban Studies at Hofstra University. I'm sure we'll talk again. Thank you. And up next, a helping hand for the men and women who fought this country's battles.